Did you know that all the way back in 1500 BC that Job told us that the earth hangs on nothing? Job 26 7 tells us he hangs the earth on nothing. Did you know science did not discover that? That the earth was free floating or hanging on nothing until 1650? Think about that. The Bible's real, guys. It's God's Word. You know, about 2,000 years ago, Hebrews was written, and uh, Hebrews 11.3 tells us that the things we see are made from things that are unseen that we can't see. And we didn't know that until recently, you know. Science didn't discover that until recently, so there was no way for them to know that unless God told them that, okay? So the Bible is God's word. There is a God, and he is the God of the Bible, and the Bible is his word. I promise you that. And, uh, I mean, there's just so many things in there that... We didn't know until recently that, you know, they knew way back then and they were 100% correct about all of it. So there's no other way about that than to know that God told them that. So uh, I just wanted to encourage you with that today. You know, in Isaiah 40, 22, it was written somewhere between 740 to 680 BC. It states, it is he who sits above the circle of the earth. And then it goes on to say, and stretches out the heavens. And what do we know now? We know the earth is a circle. And we know that the heavens, space, is actually expanding, which we didn't know till recently. So, you know, that is another thing that they knew back then that we're just now figuring out. And how do they know that? Because God told them. It's, it's proof of God. I'm telling you, I've, I've got so much proof of God. Did you know God put a cross on the donkey's back? The one animal that his son was going to ride into Jerusalem? Did you know that? That is proof of God. The cross is there. It's on the donkey's back. The one symbol that God knew was going to represent his son. Think about that. I mean, what's the odds of that? Come on. The whole Bible's prophecy. Every word, pretty much. Uh, you know, they say that 30% or so is prophecy, but really the whole thing is, Everything in there happens <laughs> again in the future. It really does. But uh, and that's how you know it's God's word. What I'd like to talk to you about today is, is Joseph. Did you know that he is a foreshadowing of Jesus? I mean, think about it. He really is. He got rejected by his brothers. He got punished for something he didn't do. Then exalted to the second most powerful person in Egypt. That sound familiar? Another thing to remember is, is Joseph told them to take his bones back with them when they went back home, whenever they left Egypt to go back to the Promised Land. Some people speculate that's why Pharaoh went after them because, you know, he represents evil and uh, he knew that they was going to be liberated because Joseph's tomb was empty. But that's just speculation. But what is very interesting is, is that if you take Joseph's name and title, you know, they would say their name and where they was from. Uh, Joseph's was Joseph of Ramathium. I hope I'm pronouncing that right. I'm not sure. But, uh, if you translate that to Greek and then the English, it comes out to Joseph of Arimathea. Whoa, right? Because <laughs> uh, 
whose tomb was empty after Jesus got buried in it? Joseph of Arimathea's. So it's definitely a foreshadowing of Jesus and Joseph's tomb was empty back then. And then the guy who buried Jesus in his tomb was Joseph of Arimathea. And his tomb was empty after Jesus rose. So, I mean, isn't God amazing? He is so amazing. Just get in the Word, dig in. I promise you, the Bible will blow your mind. If you do your research and really look into things, it will blow your mind. It really will. God is amazing. And He's the one true God the God of the Bible. You want proof of God? All you gotta do is go outside at night and look up at the moon. I mean, really, think about it. Do you know that the sun's diameter is 400 times greater than the moon? But the sun is also precisely 400 times further away that's the reason that we can have eclipses the way that we do and that's what makes them look the same size and it also orbits perfectly to make perfect eclipses I mean what's the odds of that guys I mean what's the odds of any of it it's it's impossible and the moon is 2160 miles at the equator exactly the size it needs to be without the moon the earth's axis would be different without it possibly no seasons or no life as we know it it also orbits closer than it should for its size just think about that it has a perfect circular orbit that lines up and does eclipses with the sun that just the right distance away that'll make it have a perfect eclipse like that? I mean, come on, get real. If God is real, God is real. I mean, all you have to do is look around. Come on guys. 100% Proof of God, part seven. Today I wanna to talk about Genesis. When, Genesis 2, 21 to be exact. When uh, God put Adam asleep, he said he caused him to go into a deep sleep, and then he took one of his rib bones out of his side and made Eve from it. Well, a very interesting thing to do with that is, is that the rib bone is the only bone that can completely regenerate itself. It can completely regrow. Now, how would anyone know that back then? They couldn't. Come on, guys. God is real. I mean, God is 100% real, the God of the Bible. And that's exactly what happened. Another very interesting thing about that is, is that Adam's side was pierced to take a rib bone out, which created his bride. And then at Jesus' crucifixion, his side was pierced to show that he was dead and uh, blood and water ran out and uh, that created his bride. Think about that. You know, they call Jesus the second Adam and uh, the correlation there is pretty awesome. You have to, you have to agree with that. <laughs> what if I was to tell you that a tornado tore through a parts house and completely built, put together completely, just made like a brand new, brand spanking new F-16 or stealth bomber. And then not only made it, you know, I'm talking about screwed every screw in just perfect made the perfect jet okay not only that old and greased all the fittings filled it with jet fuel and pulled a pilot out of a house somewhere and planted him right in that pilot seat and fired it up ready for takeoff you'd think i was crazy wouldn't you 
Or what if I was to tell you that uh, that I threw a bunch of computer parts in a spare bedroom. I just threw just all kinds of computer parts in there. And uh, I come back later, they put themselves all together and made this nice computer. I mean nice. Most advanced computer you ever seen. And not only that, it wrote its own program. And I mean way better than Windows. This is the best program you ever seen. You think I was stupid or crazy or, you know, or something like that, wouldn't you? That's how absolutely absurd and impossible that it is that this universe and made itself, that this universe, this earth, and all of life on it came to be about on its own. I mean, our DNA code alone is more advanced than any computer system, you know, any computer code ever written. Yet, it just... It just wrote itself. No one done it, right? Wrong. Come on, people. Get it together. I mean, that's the odds we're looking at here. That's the same kind of odds it would be that this universe made itself. It's impossible odds. So think about that. There is a God. He is the God of the Bible. I promise you that. Today I want to talk about Bethlehem, which I don't know if you know this, but Bethlehem means house of bread. And Jesus was born there, and he was the bread of life. But it goes way deeper than that. Bethlehem was famous for raising the unblemished lambs that, they, that was for sacrifice at the temple. And Jesus was the final sacrifice for all, the sins of the world I mean no one no one could put this together but God and Jesus was actually born in the same cave system that those lambs were raised in and born in and when he was born he was placed in a manger now I don't know if you know what that is but back then a manger meant a food trough. It was a food trough for animals, which is also very significant that she placed him in that for more than one reason. But the a big reason is, is that Jesus was the bread of life. Think about that. You know, what does he tell us? And what does he tell us at the Last Supper? That bread is his body. You know, we are to eat from him. So it's very significant that she placed him in that manger or that food trough. So, uh, yeah, everything in the Bible is 100% proof of God because, I mean, only God could put this stuff together. No one could put this stuff together. Come on. No one could. Not anyone. It's amazing. It's truly amazing. Sodom and Gomorrah. That is 100% proof of God. I mean, come on. The Bible tells us exactly what happened. And then you go, you go to those sites, and that's exactly what happened. Science is trying to explain it away with like a meteor now or something. You know what I'm saying? But where's all these sulfur meteors at? <laughs> uh, if you've ever looked it up, you know that that place got pelted with sulfur balls all over and it got so hot it literally turned the city to ash some of the structures still stand but they're completely ash I mean it got so hot it turned the stone to ash when they dig there there's like a huge amount of ash you know downward like I mean I mean it's pretty thick and in that ash, there's, you know, pieces of human bones all over. So, and I mean, just think about that. The Bible told us what happened. And, you know, the story of Lot, how the angels came and pulled him out first before it was destroyed. 
just think about that. Sodom and Gomorrah, the, it's, that's evidence we have 100% of the story that's backed 100%. I mean, just think about what that means. You know, before they was trying to try to explain it away from volcano, but then there was no volcano that could have done it. Then they try to explain it away by a meteor. But, you know, that sulfur that's found there is 98% pure. More pure than any sulfur found naturally on Earth. So they know it's not from here. What does it say it happened in the Bible? It said God rained down fire and brimstone. And then you look, and that's what happened. But I don't know why they would think it. I mean, could it, God have sent a meteor? Yes, he could have. But I don't know why they want to explain it away with, like, <laughs> a meteor, because where's these sulfur meteors at? It just don't make any sense. The only thing that does make sense is the Bible tells you exactly what happened. And what happened was God rained down fire and brimstone upon that place. Both of those places. The wild thing is, is those sulfur balls, once you get outside of the city limits, no more sulfur balls. Think about that. It's 100% proof of God. Did you know that there is very strong evidence that... Noah's Ark has been found. It was found a long time ago, actually. And uh, there's even <laughs> a Noah's Ark National Park where it's at. But see, somehow they keep all this out of the mainstream. They keep it hidden. But, I mean, there's really strong evidence. I've looked into all of it. It's really strong. I mean... Even the traditions in that area, what those places were named, like where the boat is, you know, it, it's named after that. It's named Noah's Big Boat, okay, if you knew that language. And the same with the tradition of the, the town where Noah and his family supposedly lived. It's, uh, it's called the Place of the Eight. And the evidence is amazing. Even in historical documents, there's like, a, a, you know, a few different people. Uh, Josephus is one of them. In his writings, named. It was still visible. It was there. And people still went there till that day to take pieces of it for good luck and stuff. And it was it was known back then. Now you ask me how it was so known all throughout the ages and then now they've hidden it so good. Where that's at, it, there's evidence there that, you know, they try to hide from you that no one even knows about, like the anchor stones. There's these great big anchor stones with holes in the top of them where a rope went through that held them on the boat. And you know, they when they make models of Noah's Ark today, they put it in, they put it in there and they'll test it, but they ain't never got no anchor stones on them. Like, oh, it couldn't withstand the way it would have been. But with those anchor stones, that makes the world of difference because the anchor stones keeps the boat facing the waves. Not only that, it keeps it it keeps it leveled a lot better also because the weight of the stones hanging underneath the boat. They are thought to hang off the back end of the boat, and that would keep it facing the waves. But either way, wherever they was hanging at, it would definitely stable the boat big time. Because you have all that weight hanging underneath, holding it up steady. And then that's not it. At the at the place of the eight, there's a like a there was a tombstone with rainbow on it with eight people and all this stuff and even the anchor stones are marked it's just amazing all the evidence there did you know that the real mount sinai has been found and the evidence is amazing if you look in most bibles this is the map they'll give you but you see that's not where mount sinai is at the real exodus would have looked more like this and not only has it been found, the top still shows signs where it was burnt. And not only that, they found where the 
golden calf altar was. It literally has carvings into it of cows to so people would remember that. And the Saudi Arabian government have the altar area fenced off. You're not allowed in there and everything else. And it's said they've even found, you know, gold from where they ground up the gold calf into like dust, you know, they, but they have it fenced off. And, you know, it says in Exodus that they built 12 pillars and the remains of the pillars are there along with other stuff like where they housed animals and stuff. It's all there. The remains of it anyway. It's amazing. And in the Bible, I don't know why they ever thought it was over on what they call the Sinai Peninsula, because in the Bible, it tells you that the mountains in Arabia, it literally tells you that. Here's the verse. I mean, what more evidence do you need? But yeah, it has been found. The Bible is the truth. The Bible is the word of God. Everything in there has happened or is going to happen. It is. If you're not prepared for what's about to come to this earth, you should prepare. Please accept Jesus. God is real. Jesus is our Savior. I love you guys. Think about this. Everything has been found. The Bible is 100% true. Please accept Jesus while you still can. Did you know the site of the Red Sea crossing has been found? Not only has it been found, there's significant evidence that it is the right place. It's Nueve Beach on the Gulf of Aqaba. If you don't know, the Gulf of Aqaba is connected to the Red Sea. And back in that day, they called it the Red Sea. And I can prove that with scripture, okay? If you go to 1 Kings 9.26, it tells you, And King Solomon made a navy of ships in Ezon Geber, which is beside Eloth, or Elath, that's the same place, Eloth and Elath, on the shore of the Red Sea in the land of Edom. Now you see that? See how they called it the Red Sea? Now we know where that was. If you go up to the top of the Gulf of Aqaba, that's exactly where it was at. That's where Eloth or Elath was. We know that. So we know they called the Gulf of Aqaba the Red Sea. Now, we go to Exodus 14.2, and it tells you that they encamped between Migdal and the sea. We know where Migdal was. Migdal, you know, and Migdal means fortified city or tower, and there's still the remains of that to this day. It was like a three-story complex, and that's just right up the shore from Nueve Beach. Then go to Isaiah 19:19, 19, 19, and it mentions a pillar at the border thereof to the Lord. The pillar is still standing there till today, and it dates back to that time. And it's on Nueve Beach. And the name Nueve on old maps of Nueve Beach. It shows you the full name. I'll put it up here. And that name actually means Waters of Moses' Opening. I mean, right there. What more evidence do you need? Boom, there you go. They named it after that. Come on. They've went diving there many times on both sides. They found numerous things of coral that's shaped just like chariot wheels where the coral grew on the chariot wheels and you can still see them i'll show you some pictures up here there's even been one golden chariot wheel found there's been uh shrunken horse hooves found in there and even human bones i'll show you pictures up here too the proof is overwhelming that is the spot, and it's right in the exact area to where they crossed over the Saudi Arabia, where the 
how the real Mount Sinai is. Love you guys. Thanks for watching. Have a nice day.